Transactions and assets are two of the most important concepts in database technology. In this video, we'll explain these two concepts. I will use as a running example an accounts table in a bank. So that table might look something like that. You have an ID, customer ID, and a balance. So basically, this says that this is account with ID 7. This account belongs to customer 73, and the current balance is 1,000 euros, and so forth. So, so we have different accounts collected in that table. And for simplicity, I will use the following notation. I will say, okay, this cell, I refer to this cell by A. I say A refers to this cell and by B I refer to that cell. Of course, in reality, you will use SQL to access those cells, but in order to explain what transactions are about and what asset is, is about, I don't need the entire table. We just talk about these individual cells in the following. So what the bank transfer does is it transfers, let's say, 100 euros from A to B. From cell A, we transfer 100 bucks to cell B. So what this means, we can worry about a before state of the cells and an after state of the cells. So this is the state of the cells before the transaction takes place and this is the state of the cells after the transaction has done its job. So before we have a thousand euros in A, afterwards we have a hundred euros less, so we are down to 900. And for cell B, we have 2,000 euros before the transaction takes place and afterwards we have 2,100, so an addition of 100 euros. What happens in between while the transaction is running is undefined. Huh? We just know that before we are in this state and afterwards we are in that state. And another way of denoting that is something like that. So again, we have here our cell A, cell B, the 100 euros are being transferred. And programmatically what happens is in your application program, you will read the state, the current state of cell A into a local variable. So this here is a local variable. And this here is the actual cell, actual database cell. Okay. So basically you read this current value of this capital A into your local variable A, then you decrease A by 100, the 100 euros you want to transfer, and then you overwrite the database cell with a current value. Yeah, so you overwrite it with 900. Then for the other account, you have to do basically the mirrored operation. So you also read the value of database cell B into local variable small b. Then you increase it by 100 bucks. And then you overwrite database cell B by the new value. So you have two update operations in the database system. Yeah, they're kind of disconnected. So this is done independently of this other operation. And that's a problem. That's the root of the problem because now consider that the database crashes. So assume we changed the account balance to 900 euros. Then the database crashes at this point in time, but then we never add the 100 euros to account B, which means that the bank wins in this situation. Right? We never added the 100 euros to account B and that's a problem right? because the 100 euros were simply lost in that case. So that's the reason why databases have a concept that's called transaction and that's a very old concept that has existed in databases for almost 50 years now. So what it means is we define these two operations to be a unit. So we bundle them in one unit and that's called a transaction. And the important thing is this unit is atomic, which means the database system will make sure that all of these operations get executed or none of those operations gets executed. So what we had before in this scenario, that only half of the operations, only this operation to account A is executed and B is not executed, this cannot happen if those operations are bundled or contained in a transaction. So in this situation, it's either all of it gets executed or none of it gets executed. So if a crash happens while the transaction is running, so similar to the situation before, 
The database system will make sure that changes that were applied already here to the store, if that is the case, it depends a bit on the algorithm, but conceptually that those changes here will never find its way to the database store. In this case, the database state of A will not be changed because the transaction didn't run to the end. It did not commit. Yeah? At the end of the transaction, we say commit in SQL. Yeah? So you, we would write some, if that were a SQL statement, in the end we would commit. And as this transaction did not commit successfully, this means that the value A will never be overwritten, will, will not be changed conceptually. So the database will roll back to the old state. The database looks as if this transaction never executed. Okay, so let's look at the individual properties of asset in detail. So in asset, this, uh, we have the asset properties, and this is the A property, atomicity, all or nothing, which means all of the actions of the transactions are executed on none of them. It's, a, it's an atomic unit. Consistency, that is a C. That means that the transaction mustn't violate consistency at commit time. As you might know from your undergrad classes, consistency may be defined in various ways. So consistency may imply foreign key constraints, foreign key constraints, but also check constraints or triggers. Yeah, in the database system, you have many, many ways to check for consistency. It's a longer story. And on the high level, this C rule, the C condition here says that the transaction mustn't violate the consistency when it wants to commit. So in other words, when the transaction starts at this point in time, we assume that the database is consistent. When it commits, we have to make sure that the database is still in a consistent state but whatever happens in between is undefined. And this is important, for instance, if you assume we have the following consistency check, assume we have a sum over all accounts uh, and that must yield the same result within a bank. If you transfer money from one account to another account within a bank, it's clear that at this point in time, you have a certain sum. Yeah, let's say the sum is whatever, 42,000. And once you commit, the sum of all accounts in the bank must be 42,000 as well. But in between, there's a slight inconsistency. Yeah? At this point in time, if you executed the sum here, the balance would be 41,900. But here again, what would be 42,000. So depending on when you execute this query, conceptually, the consistency would be violated yeah, if that became visible to other transactions. Consistency condition basically says that we assume that the database is consistent before we run the transaction. We also assume that the transaction leaves the database in a consistent state when it wants to commit. So this means here, again, the database is consistent, but in between we may violate consistency constraints. Yeah, we, we can do whatever we want and that is fine. The third property is isolation. This basically implies that concurrent, transa concurrent transactions mustn't influ influence each other. Here's a simple problem. So assume we have two transfers running, both send money to account B. So this sends money from account A to account B. This sends money from account C to account B. Again, I've written it down as in the previous examples. This is not a problem here. Transaction one reads from account A, from cell A. Here we read from cell C, but both write to B. And of course, this may lead to a situation where this write operation is overwritten by that write operation. You need some sort of serialization here. Otherwise, you may end up with a lost update. For instance, assume that these operations happen at the same time they both read the, assume that both read the old value of B. And then one of those writes first. Uh, assume that this writes first, then that writes, and which means that this write operation will overwrite that write operation. And this is as if this transaction never happened. So you want to make sure that both the 100 bucks and the 300 bucks end up at this account. And if you don't serialize that in the right way, you have a problem. We will look at that in more detail later on, why that is a problem and what you can do about that. So different algorithms to handle that. 
the most important algorithm today in database systems. And that, that algorithm was already used in disk-based systems, but it's still used heavily in main memory systems is multi-version concurrency control, or MVCC for short, multi-version concurrency control. And there's a separate video I did on MVCC where I explain it in more detail what the problems are with serialization and how to avoid them with MVC. So bottom line here is isolation. You have to make sure in the database system that concurrent transactions don't influence each other. Isolation means that the database should behave as if transactions are executed serially, so one by one. Durability, that is a final property, so the D, that means that changes done by committed transactions must be preserved. So here we have the following situation. Assume we have a timeline like that from left to right. Two transactions are running again, the same situation as before. Assume that they are scheduled like this or that they are executed like this. So we have a transfer from A to B and a transfer from C to B. What you could imagine is that if this is the current time, so this did some computation, this did some computation, but then transaction one commits, and at this point in time, when, the, when you commit a transaction, the database gives you feedback, oh yeah, I committed this transaction, everything is fine. At this point in time, the database system must guarantee, must make sure that the changes done by transaction one will never be lost. So everything, transaction changed in the database state must be preserved at all times. That's very important. Yeah, that's what durability is about. But now if you assume so time goes on and we crash, maybe the database system crashes for whatever reason, software error, hardware error, power failure, whatever, these things happen. And assume that transaction two at that point in time didn't commit yet then the database system must make sure that none of the changes already done by transaction two make its way into the database state. So it must make sure that this transaction is not halfway reflected in the database system. The database system must make sure that none of what transaction two did are preserved in the database store. Yeah, that's very important. So only the actions done by committed transactions must be preserved. For durability, it gets more involved. Assume a situation that, while well, you commit it, but assume that some of the data, maybe let's say this data, was not committed to the database store yet. It wasn't committed to a persistent medium in the database store. Still, the database system has to guarantee that the changes become durable. And there are various techniques that do that. Basically, those techniques are called recovery algorithms. Recovery algorithms. And the most important technique in that space is ARIES. It's a very nice technique to make sure that the database system becomes durable or that the changes become durable. There's a separate video on that. I'll also link to that in the description of this video. Yeah, again, those are the four properties. So atomicity means all or nothing. The transaction is executed entirely or not at all, but it's not legal to do anything in between, like execute the transaction halfway. Consistency means that the database system is in a consistent state before you execute the transaction and after you execute the transaction. What happens in between is undefined. Now you can violate consistency inside the transaction, temporarily inside the transaction that's allowed. But once you want to commit, you must make sure that the consistency constraints, the integrity constraints are respected again. Otherwise, you won't be able to commit. Isolation is about making sure that concurrent transactions don't influence each other in the sense that you lose updates or that you run into invalid states. So from the point of view of a single transaction, it must always look like as if the database system is owned by that transaction. From the point of view of a single transaction, you don't see effects of other transactions. That's very important. And there's a long story hidden behind that. We will look at that again in, in the um, MVCC video.
Durability is about making sure that the effects of committed transactions actually end up in the database store. That's very important. And uh, Aries is basically about that. Yeah. Of course, both of those implicitly also affect consistency and the atomicity. Yeah? So um, if only half of the state becomes durable, then you violate atomicity, of course. Yeah? So this influences this one. This also influences consistency, of course, and the same holds for isolation. Isolation, if done in the wrong way, may ruin all of the other aspects. So faulty isolation may ruin consistency, atomicity, but also durability. But that's a longer story hidden behind all of that. And we will look into this in two follow-up videos. One is MVCC, and then there's a, a whole series about ARIES, which is a very nice recovery algorithm that is widely used. In So these two algorithms are the most important algorithms when you look into how to make sure that ACID is guaranteed in database systems.